knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. At this point in the series, we understand the structure of the Earth, which includes the crust, and we know that there is crust below our feet, but also oceanic crust at the bottom of the ocean. We mentioned a few of the features of oceanic crust when we introduced plate tectonics, those being mid-ocean ridges and trenches. But to fully understand the structure of oceanic crust, it will be useful to learn more about the layers of the ocean itself. Water covers over 70% of the Earth's surface, so if we want to know about every area of Earth's surface, this will indeed be a critical section to include. Let's take a deep dive into the Pacific Ocean. The western edge of the Pacific Ocean starts with a ramp of continental crust that extends off the coast of mainland Japan to the Deep Japan Trench. Scientists call this ramp of continental crust beneath the ocean the continental shelf. Typically, continental shelves are broad sloping plains covered in shallow ocean water less than 250 meters deep. But in the Pacific Ocean, the gentle gradient of the continental shelf drops off quickly into a steep incline called the continental slope. Off the coast of Japan, the continental slope extends all the way down to the bottom of the Japan Trench, over 7 kilometers in depth. As the depth changes along the continental shelf and slope, the amount of sunlight that penetrates through the ocean water changes drastically. At the shallow depths along the continental shelf, between 0 and 200 meters, there is enough light present for photosynthesis to take place. Physical oceanographers, scientists who study the interactions of the ocean with light, wind, and rock, have called this top layer the photic, or epipelagic zone. Pelagic means open ocean and refers only to areas that are far from the influence of the shore and the ocean floor. 90% of ocean life, from whales and dolphins to green algae and phytoplankton, lives within the epipelagic zone. Beneath the epipelagic zone is the mesopelagic zone, which extends from 200 to 1,000 meters, where sunlight can no longer reach. Small bristlemouth fish make their home here and migrate up to the epipelagic zone under the cover of night to feed. Although most people have never even seen one, the tan bristlemouth fish is the most abundant vertebrate on Earth, so they are clearly thriving in their deep-sea environment. Next is the bathypelagic zone, from 1,000 to 4,000 meters. Sunlight certainly can't reach the bathypelagic zone, and the organisms there live in complete darkness, unable to see anything. Some species, like the anglerfish, use the lack of sunlight to their advantage and create specks of light from symbiotic bioluminescent bacteria living at the tip of their dorsal fin to attract prey. Even deeper is the abyssopelagic zone, extending from 4,000 to 6,000 meters. Temperatures in the abyssopelagic zone stay at a chilly 4 degrees Celsius, and pressures reach 200 to 600 times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Incredibly, there are some organisms that can withstand these conditions. Sea spiders with spindly 30 centimeter long legs and mud-eating sea pigs scuttle across the bottom of the ocean floor, making an unlikely home. Finally, the last zone is the hadopelagic zone, and it extends from 6,000 to as far as 11,000 meters. The hadopelagic zone is only found in deep ocean trenches, like the Mariana, and it is occupied only by a few species of two worms and sea cucumbers. Now, it is certainly the case that we could talk much more extensively about all of the fascinating living organisms that inhabit each of these zones, but that is the subject of the zoology series. So if you want to learn more about aquatic animal life, be sure to visit that playlist in the near future. For our purposes in this geology series, it is merely important to have a basic understanding of the layers of the ocean and the depths they correspond with, as well as the general features of each layer. After all, the ocean is what sits atop the oceanic crust, filling in every nook and cranny, from the deepest trench all the way up to sea level. 
And with the ocean itself now covered, let's head all the way down to the ocean floor and discuss oceanic crust next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.